In this video, I will explain what is required to get an A star in the Pearson and Excel IAL in mathematics. As we mentioned in a previous video, depending on the total of the six UMS, you are awarded a grade. In order to receive an A star, some criteria must be met. For an IAL in mathematics, the total UMS must be at least 480, and the total of the P3 and P4 units must be at least 180. You can think of this as two conditions, one for the A and one for the star. Both are needed for an A star. Let me go over some examples. For example one, the total UMS is more than 480, so the A condition is satisfied, and the total for P3 and P4 is more than 180, so the star condition is satisfied as well, so an A star is awarded. For example two, total UMS is exactly 480, and the total of P3 and P4 is exactly 180, so again an A star is awarded. Although the first student performed better than the second student overall, they still received the same grade. And now it gets interesting. For example 3, the total UMS is more than 480, but the total of P3 and P4 is less than 180 by one mark, so the grade awarded is A without a star. For example 4, although the total of P3 and P4 is the maximum possible, the total UMS is one less than 480, so the grade awarded here is B. For an IAL in pure mathematics, the total UMS must be at least 480, and the total of the P3, P4, and either FP2 or FP3 must be at least 270. Again, you can think of these as two conditions, one for the A and one for the star. This is straightforward, so I will skip going over an example. For the IAL in further mathematics, things are a bit more complicated. First, we will divide the units into two categories, the IAS units, which can be used for the IAS certificates, and the AI2 units, which can only be used for the IAL certificates. In general, the IA2 units are harder than the IAS units. As you can see, there are six IAS units and eight IA2 units. For two IALs, the first one, the IAL in mathematics, is handled as we explained before. For the IAL in further mathematics, you will have a total of three or four or five IA2 units, one of them being compulsory and the rest being optional. To receive an A star, the total UMS must be at least 480 and the total of the three best IA2 units must be at least 270. Again, you can think of this as two conditions, one for the A and one for the star. Let's go over some examples. With this combination, in the six units for the IAL in further mathematics, that's the second row, there are only three IA2 units. In example one, the total UMS is 480 and the total of the IA2 units is 270, so both conditions are satisfied and an A star is awarded. In example 2, the total UMS is 480, but the total of the IA2 units is 269. The A condition is satisfied, but not the star condition, so the grade awarded is an A. In example 3, the total UMS is 479, and the total of the IA2 units is 270. Although the star condition is satisfied, the A condition is not, so the grade awarded is B. Here we have swapped the S2 and the D1 units, so now in the IAL in further mathematics we have four IA2 units. In example 4, the total UMS is 490 and the total of the best three AI2 units is 275, so both conditions are satisfied and an A star is awarded. In example 5, FP2 is decreased by 10 marks, the total UMS drops to 480, but the total of the best three AI2 units only drops by 5 marks to 270, since we will be counting M3 instead of FP2. Both conditions are still satisfied, so an A star is awarded again. In example 3, the total UMS is 483, but the total of the best 3 IA2 units is below 270, so the grade awarded is an A. A common question we get asked a lot is, who decides which IAL each unit will be assigned to? And the answer is Pearson at Excel. They try to maximize the grade of the first IAL, that is the IAL in mathematics, and then the second one, which is the IAL in further mathematics. Thanks for watching. If you found the video useful, please like and subscribe.